One thing you can do with bobby pins that I don't talk a ton about in my tutorials, but it could be useful for some of you, is to actually create a base and then pin into it. Now, we kind of talked about that with the bun, where you create a base by pinning at each of the different places and using that to hold your style. And so that's one way that you can do it, but you can also do it with your hair just sitting like this. So you can create a line of however many bobby pins you want and connect them kind of like the cars on a train. So let's say we have this first car. So then we're going to pin through the end of this pin right here. And slide that through. So just for fun, I'm going to make this a little bit long. And then whenever you hit the end of it, you can see I have the loop on this side. So whenever you hit the end, you just want to put the loop back so you have your little end to your train your caboose. Although this is like the side that the engine would be on, isn't it? <laughs> I like your analogies. Alright, so you might be wondering what you would do with something like this. Well, what you could do is like if you wanted to have a little twist in here, you could do that and pull it back like so. And if you wanted to be able to secure that, you can take your pins, grab some hair on your way over, and pin down into that base that we just made. Doing that if you want to, you can crisscross your pins. Alright, so you can see this is like just a little example of something you could do, but it's really tight and secure to her head. So this was going to be like part of an updo, like I was going to continue this around and do something back here. This part would stay. Like she could go and whip her head back and forth at the prom, and it's going <laughs> to stay there. But you can kind of get the idea of it. Creating a base and then pinning into it is always going to help you. Whether you're creating a base by just setting down those basic um, little four pins in your um, bun and then pinning into those or whether you're creating a base out of nothing and then making a style on top of it it's really going to help you to get that style locked down locked down <laughs> Alright, so a lot of you guys might be wondering how in the world do I hide my bobby pins especially in an updo because you really don't want to see your bobby pins sticking out everywhere basically what you want to be sure that you're doing is that you're getting under this first layer of hair if you're sitting on top of it, your bobby pin is going to show. If at any point your bobby pin is sitting on top of it, it's going to show. So if you have it like halfway in and halfway out, it's going to be showing. So what you want to do is make sure that you're positioning the bobby pin so that it's going into the hair at a 45 degree angle. So it would be kind of like that. So it's not going directly parallel to the head, nor is it going, like it can't go perpendicular to the head because that would hurt. But 45 degree angle from the head and then you pin it in and it hides really nicely underneath. And you might find that this little tail end likes to stick up where you have the extra bump. You can just turn it so that the straight side is facing up and the bumpy side is facing down. And that will make it a little bit easier. So again, you position it inward and pin down. And it hides itself really nicely. And if you, know, you have the little top sticking out, you can just loosen the hair around it and that will kind of help to hide it a little bit more as well. Now let's say you want to pin a piece of hair against the head and you don't want it to show. It's the same kind of thing. I Let's just pretend like we're making a little shaping right there. So you can put that there. And then again, I'm taking the bobby pin at a 45 degree angle and pinning, positioning into the hair, and then just that one little end sticks up. So basically what you don't want to do is to take the hair, the bobby pin parallel to the head, try to incorporate all of the hair because then you get that and you get this really big exposed bobby pin just sitting out there or you could do like what I just did and instead position it in 45 degree angle to the head and only catch the back of the hair you really you feel like you have to catch all of it you really only have to catch the back of it pull it through the rest of the hair will follow and you've got your nice little hidden thing where it, you can see she's got the little shaping and you can't see the pins except for the little nubs on top And a quick note on pinning these little loops, because I've had these in my videos where I curl um, and, you know, an updo or I'm curling my hair and I want to set the curl. So you've got your curl wrapped around your two fingers and you want to place it. I'm going to show it with the little opening facing you guys so you can see. Really fancy here, what you're going to see from the top is this loop and supposedly, or I'm assuming in these cases, either it doesn't matter what the pins look like or you're going to be putting something right here so you won't see it. So you can just pin the pins in horizontally and crisscross them right inside that loop. If you've made the loop, it ought to really just sit on top of the hair and stay up nicely.
can see with her hair, I took a fairly large section of hair. And so it might take more than one pin. And you can see that I have these little guys falling out. All I'm just going to do is kind of run my hand along it and catch all those hairs together. And then hold them. And just bobby pin them right into place right there. thing is, let's say, just kind of fixing a hairstyle. So let's say that we ended up with this fantastic updo all around here and then you've got this little area that's loose and falling and you not looking right. The good thing about bobby pins is that you can think about them kind of like invisible fingers. You put the hair where you want it, if you pin it right, it'll stay there just like there's little fingers holding it. So you've got this extra baggage here. One thing that you can do if you have an area where you can hide it, let's say I've got like a loop right here, you can pull it back so that it's hidden underneath that loop. Or you can disguise it by combing it to where to position where it looks kind of natural and then pinning it in place there. I'll show you guys that version because it is a little bit harder. It's a lot easier just to pin this stuff underneath a other part of your hairstyle. But if you want to just kind of make it flow nicely and you don't have anything to hide it under, just smooth it back with your hands. Even if this is a, a little tiny bump or if it's a big bump. And you're going to pin like I showed you before, where you're pinning in at a 45 degree angle to the hair. And we're just going to let it go in. I'll pull my fingers apart so you can see what I'm doing. Turn a little bit. And just pushing through there. And you can see there's going to be a little bit of an indention there. There's going to be a little bit of change, especially with her highlights. You can really see it. You're not ever going to be able to completely hide that. You're not ever going to be able to completely fix a style when it's got that much of a crazy thing going on. This is a good little way to fix it. So you could go ahead and pin it again if you need to because I still have some um, looseness right here, a little bit of volume that I don't want. So I'm going to smooth it back with my hand again. And then I'm going to take this, pull it in at a 45 degree angle, and actually pin it back up into that first pin. And then you can kind of arrange the hair around it as you need, but you got that kind of pulled back. So we went from having a big mess to it's pulled back. You can still see there's a little something going on, so you might need to be creative to hide it, but you do have the bigness out of the way. Another thing you can do if it's just this little guy hanging out, so let's say we've got this all taken care of and you just have one thing hanging out, you can take your bobby pin and put the loop through it like so, and use this to direct this wherever you want it. See, it's going to follow wherever that bobby pin goes. So let's say I want it back here. I'm going to slide the bobby pin along until it gets back here and pin it down and into the hair. Assuming you've got something to hide this little thing right here, you're good to go. If not, you can just take another little bobby pin and do the same thing where you catch the unwanted hair in the bottom tooth of it and pin down into the hair. And you're hiding it right away. A quick tip for those of you guys who with really thick hair and you want to put your hair into a bun or something like that where it's like a buildable style is that if you have all of your hair together, which is a lot of hair for Anna, and you're trying to twist it, you've already got a lot right here. So what you want to do is actually pin it at intervals throughout the hairstyle. So let's say I already have a little bit of it right here. You could go ahead and throw a pin in there. And then, you know, you continue to twist it and pull it around. And then after you've got that little loop, you can stick another pin in. And then basically as you go, you just continue pinning. And then you can actually finish off by doing our pinning at every four corners thing for a really, really secure hairstyle. Alright, now for pinning in like the tail of a braid, you can see I have her ends right here and they're kind of tapering a lot. Basically what I like to do is line it up around and kind of pull it so that it goes underneath. So you can see you've got kind of the end of her bun right here and there's a space there to be able to fit something underneath. So I'm just going to pull her ends right here up so that they go underneath it. And then just pin. And then if you have them tapering as much as Anna's were right there, then you can go ahead and put more than one pin in if you need to. 
Alright, so you might end up with a little flyaway like this that's kind of hanging out away from the bun. What you can do with something like this, and this can happen in anything, either a bun or an updo or a braid even. So if you're somebody that has a lot of layers and you get really annoyed with a flyaway and a braid, this is one thing that you can do, is that you take the flyaway like this, and you go ahead and put it through your bobby pin. So your bobby pin's kind of got that. It's going to be its little guy. This is going wherever your bobby pin is going. You go ahead and take your bobby pin underneath the braid, push it into place, flyaway's gone. Alright, so thanks for watching guys. I hope this was really helpful. It's a nice little basic 101 on how to do some bobby pins and really get that to hold really well and hopefully you guys have a better idea of how to hide your bobby pins. So that I think is all I have to say. You think we got everything? I think so. Okay, cool. So thank you for being my model. Of course. Um, and mm -hmm. thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah! Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes.